Hi, as part of the Beyond Space Time project, I'm going to be talking to you today about the black hole information loss paradox. This is a conundrum that has been at the forefront of cutting edge theoretical physics for several decades. And it all started when Hawking proposed to the world that black holes evaporate. Now, before I tell you why it's so fascinating, let me lay down the basics. What's a black hole? So a black hole is a region of space-time from which nothing can escape, not even light. And this encapsulates Einstein's insights that grounds relativity in which the speed of light is a barrier for all motion in the universe. Now there's something else very interesting about a black hole. It is formed when you collapse matter and energy into very, very intense densities. And because of that, the gravitational force approaches infinite. So anything that makes its way into the one-way destination that's a black hole is going to encounter the singularity that annihilates it and ends its existence in the physical realm. So far, I've just given you the classical picture of a black hole. We haven't added any quantum effects yet, and doing so can really shake things up. So Hawking started this revolution by noting that when we include the behaviors of quantum fields, black holes become much more complicated than these inert one-way destinations. They can radiate away and disappear. Hawking teaches us that we can't actually predict what state the radiation is going to be in once a black hole is gone. And more than that, we can't even reverse the film to figure out what formed the black hole in the first place. So he branded this time irreversibility or manifestation of indeterministic laws as information loss. He also set the physics community abuzz by calling it paradoxical, even though he himself didn't fully believe that. In my research, I show that this mainstream narrative of black hole information loss is actually a distraction. It's not clear why time irreversibility or indeterminism should be paradoxical, especially when we already encounter probabilities in ordinary quantum experiments. Of course, if I'm going to knock down the original formulation of the black hole information loss paradox, it would be a lot more fun if I gave you something in its place. And to do that, I'm going to describe a very useful heuristic that Hawking employed to characterize the behaviors of quantum fields near a black hole. Pervasive throughout space-time are what are known as Hawking pairs, positive and negative energy particles that are entangled. Now, it's a foundational tenet of quantum theory that entanglement is a non-local relation. In the philosophy of physics literature, this is cashed out as mutual dependence. In order to exist, these positive and negative energy particles have to come together as a package deal. What that means is that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. There's information about the pair that you can't recover just by giving me information about one or the other particle. Now, it doesn't matter how far apart in space members of a Hawking pair are. What's important is that they both be present somewhere. However, things can get tricky in the vicinity of a black hole horizon. A black hole event horizon is the point of no return. So imagine what happens when the positive and negative energy particles get separated by this boundary. When the negative energy partners get absorbed by the black hole, they cause it to shrink. That's because the negative energy they carry counteracts the positive energy that formed the black hole in the first place. And there's a direct relationship between a black hole's mass and the distance to the event horizon or its size. On the other hand, the positive energy partners manage to stay outside the black hole. So they escape and they look very much like the radiation that we were talking about earlier. The real reason we lose information about the future radiation state and the past history of the black hole is because the positive energy particles that have escaped as radiation are still entangled with their negative energy partners. 
And remember, we had already established that when you have entanglement, you can't reconstruct information about the whole just by getting information about the parts. In this case, we don't even have all the parts because the negative energy partners have been annihilated by the singularity. But wait, we are now in the situation where only positive energy particles are left in the universe, and yet they're somehow still entangled with negative energy particles that no longer exist. This completely undermines what we had established about entanglement early on, where Hawking pairs have to come together as a package deal because they're mutually dependent upon each other for their existence. It seems that Hawking derived radiation that simultaneously is and can't be entangled with non-existent phantoms. This is the genuine contradiction that I promised you, and I call this the paradox of phantom entanglement.